let me get started again telling you what the issue is. This is what I said in the beginning of the day. Uh, the National Low Income Housing Coalition says that there are 28 affordable housing units for every 100 extremely low income renters. We are not meeting the need. We are not meeting the need. That's not to say that David Henninger and his group and my partners at Mercy Housing or Denver Housing Authority aren't doing a great job, right? They are. They're doing an absolutely great job to meet the needs of 25% of the affordable housing issue. Everyone agrees what we need is more housing, innovative housing, it, ways to address the issue and the issue that we haven't seen before, family housing. And again, our providers currently in the, in the space are doing a fantastic job. They're showing great compassion. They're taking care of individuals who are struggling for a number of reasons, struggling to get back into housing, right? They are piecing together 17 and 20 um, finance structures to build a 200 unit five-story apartment complexes on expensive land, right? Um, they are thinking of new ways to, as we heard today, new ways to think about the architecture, the planning, the design, what has to be there. Yet, three out of four extremely low-income renters do not have affordable housing. We are not meeting the need, and it's not even close. Right? It's not even close. There are people who are struggling. So what we need is new and hopeful approaches. Uh, you may disagree. Some of the providers out there may say, no, we need to scale. Right? I saw the word scale in, in one of the, um, the word things there. I can't sit too long on that word. <laughs> uh, I heard Cole said, say scale. I heard... Um, I heard our, our colleague from Seattle say scale. Scaling, I'm not sure it's scaling. It might be new and hopeful and embracing what's already coming, right? Steve Kinney is here. Oh, gosh, I'm way off. Uh, Steve Kinney is here. He's a realtor in the Graduate School of Social Work telling us about his efforts, right? We have all sorts of new partners in this room telling us about their efforts. And this slide is about we know how to do it, right? Seniors, veterans, people with disabilities, we're succeeding. They're being housed, right? But a bunch of people are saying no. No, no to my backyard, no to people who have substance abuse issues, no to someone who thinks or looks or behaves differently than me. Um, but it's okay if that person who does drugs has $800,000 to afford a home next door. It's just not okay if that person doesn't have a lot of money, right? It's just not okay if that person doesn't have a lot of money. So we can do this, right? Um, my talk, uh, what's next, right? Or what, what's my talk, yeah, what's next? Um, well, we already know what's next because the people experiencing the issue are telling us, right? They're sleeping in their cars, Right? They're saying yes to tiny homes. Right? They're saying yes to innovation, accessory dwelling units. Right? They're trying universal basic income and vacancy taxes. These are not the same people who have always been working on the issue. These are new people. So what's next for you and what's next for me? Well, I'm part of a collective impact cohort. I see my colleague Drew Mueller out there in the School of Real Estate um, here with us today partners in law school, the MBA program, thinking about housing and food security. We're taking part uh, in a collective impact cohort to address housing and food security. And we're struggling, right? We're struggling, um, but it's a multidisciplinary solution. People, people are coming to this field. What we need to do is embrace that. Stop saying no. Stop saying, it, can this go to scale, right? Is this really possible? Uh, can we really afford UBI? Instead of saying no, because you know what? I think if you're saying no, in 10 years, you're not going to be part of the solution. 
The solution is coming. It's new and hopeful, and we're trying. And in 10 years, it's going to be different, right? It's going to be different. Um, so what do I want you to, d to do today? Well, um, I need that next slide. <laughs> Oh, got a little ahead of myself. So think about this. Uh, my, my partner told me just to tell you all to think about whatever slide was up there when I got caught. Um, this is still part of the it's going to look different, right? The communities aren't going to be the same. Accessory dwelling units aren't going to be the same, even if it's a spaceship on top of our neighbor's house, right? Um, we need to start saying yes, embracing what's new. Um, and so we have the partners in the room right now. We have the partners, and we need to have hope. We need to embrace new. Stop saying, no, that's not possible, because it's not possible to build. A, there's a, the National Low Income Housing Coalition also estimates that there's 156,000 156, uh, extremely low income renters in our state. Right? And we're meeting 25% of that need. So as I heard someone say earlier, the existing financing structure is not going to meet that need for 156,000. What I think is going to meet that need, you we can argue about scaling, scaling, scaling. I think it's going to be embracing everyone in this room, everyone in this room who puts together a 13 housing unit solution, a 100 housing unit solution, a solution to change the shelter system that doesn't seem to be working for very many people until we get to 158,000 and embrace the investment of the people that are here because it's going to look different in 10 years. Thank you all so much for coming.